So uh, here at Laser Technologies, um, one of our uh, core beliefs is we try to control as much of the manufacturing as we possibly can internally to our business in order to uh, give, you, give our customers the best quality and the best lead times available. Um, as part of that initiative, uh, we have recently, within the last five years, uh, brought in the capability to uh, heat treat or anneal uh, electrical steel in-house. A lot of what we manufacture are electrical grade steel components or alloys. And one of the most important parts is there's an annealing process that allows them to achieve the best properties for real world application. Um, a few years ago, Laser Technologies invested in performing this process in-house so that we could better control um, the process, better control the lead time, better serve our customers. And currently today, through a lot of trial and error and effort and research, we've been able to achieve three different alloys. We have our non-grain oriented steels, we have our cobalt iron alloys, and we have our nickel iron alloys. They are key processes for annealing because the cobalt and the nickel, they come in unannealed. You'll buy these from a mill or from a service center unannealed, and you have to achieve the annealing to get the properties that you want. Um, a few of the key components that uh, bring in uh, some challenges in that type of annealing process are the temperature at which the parts need to be annealed, um, where uh, a lot of our uh, alloys, uh, such as non-grain oriented, are annealed, uh, you are at a much lower temperature in the maybe 14 to 1500 degree Fahrenheit range versus uh, like a nickel anneal where you might be up at 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when you induce that heat, uh, there's obviously uh, growth going on in the material uh, in order to change the grain structure to give it the electrical performance that's required. So uh, what that means on the lamination end from our standpoint is uh, trying to control that growth so that we don't grow out of tolerance while still uh, maintaining the specific cycle that's required to get the magnetic properties. Our nickel and cobalt alloys are annealed at high temperature in a hydrogen environment. We are able to control the temperature, the ramping, and the cooling to ensure that we meet all the properties. Both of these alloys also have an option for an oxide. We have a separate furnace and a separate process altogether where, if desired, we can add another layer of protection on these parts with an oxide. The oxide is a separate oven altogether. We'll go in at a slightly lower temperature in an oxygen environment, and what we'll do is develop a film on the surface of the parts. We have ways in-house to verify that film. We can test to make sure that it was done correctly, that we have all the right parameters, and we're servicing our customers for exactly what they're looking for for final product. Our team is uh, qualified and NADCAP certified for annealing, so uh, we have been audited and um, we have been certified that we follow those processes to the T because we understand the criticality of those processes for your applications. Um, so at Laser Technologies, we make furnace charts on every batch that comes out of our oven. We also create a CFC certifying that our heat treatment met exactly the specification, the drawing, or whatever other requirement we've been asked to make. Um, we make the CFC so that our customers are assured that the process occurred um, with a sign off and evidence of specifically what we did or what we tested. We make uh, internal reports on every single batch that comes out of the furnace. We'll do testing on every batch that comes out of the furnace. We'll verify the quality of every load from the furnace. This includes all applicable testing, furnace charts, furnace parameters. We want to make sure that everything from the time that the parts went into the oven till the time that the parts went out of the oven, that everything went exactly according to our plan. Our annealing furnaces are located in our oven room. Uh, some of the furnaces here are actually part of our core plate processing line. But we have an uh, individual room here that's got uh, fan controls for our operators. Uh, because we are dealing with high heat, uh, we do want to keep our operators comfortable uh, in their environment and also safe. Our annealing furnace is a uh, batch oven furnace. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, it uh, has actually three gases that are piped into it, uh, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Uh, those gases <coughs> allow us to 
uh, create special mixtures, different environments based on the type of lamination and the type of cycle our customers looking to achieve. Um, there are variations in these cycles, typically customer driven, uh, that will change the, uh, the, the properties of the uh, grains uh, to either um, strengthen or, or weaken it or give you better magnetic performance. Uh, we also have a, a second furnace that we utilize uh, for oxide, oxide coating laminations. Uh, some of our customers require that we oxide coat uh, the lamination. Essentially what we're doing is we're adding an insulation level to the lamination after it's been annealed. And that insulation level uh, gives it better inter interlaminate resistance when the laminations are stacked. Uh, we have other customers that, in lieu of doing an oxide coat, actually want us to recoat it with C4, uh, C5, uh, typically C5, once in a while C6 coating. Uh, these lines here would uh, be part of the process that we use uh, in order to put a insulation level of C5 or C6 coating. Um, and again, the whole concept here is to achieve uh, better interlaminate resistance uh, between the laminations.